These first few months of van life have been bittersweet to say the least. With mechanical problem after problem after problem, it was finally time to get ahead of any more issues and do something I've been avoiding. <sighs> so I have to take the bus to the shop and unfortunately my mechanic does not have an opening till next week. So I don't wanna drive the bus and make it any worse. I'm gonna make the best of this though and car camp with the car me and Will have. We used to take so many trips in that before and hopefully it's not in the shop too long or I'm gonna be homeless for a few weeks. It's kind of exciting though because I get to go places the bus kind of can't make it through with its front wheel drive and it's so large. Now it's time to pack up and move from one car to the other. <laughs> Honestly, the worst part about car camping is not even the organization of your food or supplies. It's packing clothes, in my opinion, because it's always so messy. And odds are you only have a small bag where they're packed and it just is a mess. is secured. <sighs> okay, now we're off. Having been on the coast, the drive into the mountains was only a short few hours away. I ended up arriving well into the night and in that moment, definitely wished I had left much sooner. All right, this is where I'm supposed to be sleeping. And I kind of wish I got here earlier. It's always freaky when you pull in at night to sleep somewhere. I just got to my camp spot. It's kind of sketchy at night. Ooh. So tired though, I don't even care. I'm just gonna go straight to bed.
got into Yosemite and I could not have picked a better day or month to come. There's still snow on the ground and the trees are so full and green, but the sun is still out and it feels kind of bad. Sometimes love is a river running strong Moving like a wave through a rocky river bed Sometimes love is a dancer in the dark Spinning left and twirling through the back door Last night I crashed so early after I made that fire. I made an effort to cook dinner super early because I did not want to be outside of the car when it turned dark because it gets so dark here. I don't think there are mountain lions here, just bears. I don't know, I just 
don't like going outside in the car. And I had to use the bathroom so bad, but I just waited until daylight. I was like, there's no way I'm leaving this car before it's light out. I'm debating if I should cold plunge today. The river is right next to me, as you can hear. So that makes it super easy. Oh, should I get in the river? I don't know. so cold. Wow. You can't really dunk your head or your full body under because it's two or three inches of actual stream, but just half of me submerged is good enough. It is so cold. I feel so good now and I'm probably just going to do some breath work, get some sun in my eyes, and then probably going to head back into the valley. I just went to make breakfast and my camp stove isn't here. I always store it in my roof box. I, like there's nowhere else it could be and it's not in there. So yeah, I have no idea where it is. Um, I don't think there's any stores near me where I can buy a stove. <sighs> this is kind of bad because all my meals are required to be cooked. Could do it on a fire, but there's kind of minimal firewood and I don't have an ax or anything. Cheers to that. At least I'll have good immunity. I guess I'm gonna make the most low maintenance avocado toast. I have some dry food for a few days, like cereal <laughs> and beans. Okay, I either I just gotta figure it out. I either need to find more firewood so I can cook on fire or buy a stove somehow. This can't even be called avocado toast. This is avocado bread. But at least it's food. Despite these all too common challenges of car camping, I have been really enjoying taking some time away from the bus, if I'm going to be honest. I was able to access so many more spots in a car and was just overall able to be more spontaneous with where I go. Even with a short five window bus, you kind of have to do extensive research before driving anywhere to make sure it's suitable for a bigger rig to make it through the roads. I feel like it's important to take a step back sometimes and remind yourself why you started chasing after something to begin with. It's been nice to go back to my roots and camp super simplistically, just like I used to do. I love the comfortability van life gives you to sustain living on the road full time. It just has recently felt very complicated and I think this trip reminded me of my why behind choosing to live this way.
there's wood shavings in my shoe. I feel like these past few days in the valley have taught me so much. I honestly was afraid of heading this way just because it's much more secluded than any other place I've camped at alone. And obviously there's bears and I was just nervous about that and honestly just scared. I'm so glad I decided to go anyway. This has been so life-changing here this past week. It's tricky being alone and doing things on your own. I feel like it's a worse feeling to have that doubt before doing something than actually doing it. I feel like me doubting coming was more scary than actually being here, if that makes sense. I'm just so glad I decided to come. And it's just made me think a lot about what I've been afraid to do and just have let that doubt eat me and stop me from doing those things. I've also realized as much as I love having that alone time and space and freedom to do as I wish, sometimes those moments aren't as joyful when you don't have someone to share them with. Yeah, I've just acknowledged all those things these past few days and it's not gonna change anything I do. If anything, I just wanna do more. You can't wait around for the company of others to do the things that you want. All right, today I'm gonna take a different entrance into the park. And I've kind of fully, fully explored the whole park at this point. This is the last bit that I have not seen. So. Okay. All right. Almost forgot about my underwear. The way that the bus would literally go backwards on this road I'm on. <laughs> like, oh! This is so inaccessible for the bus or any like larger rig. When you go for a more comfortable rig, you kind of trade that for inaccessibility to certain secluded spots, but then you trade comfortability when <laughs> Uh, you get that accessibility with a car, for example. Either way, you're picking your poison. Oh! The park ranger told me, have a good time. And I was like, oh, you too. I mean, I hope she has a good time today, but she's working and that was so embarrassing. I hate when that happens.
I'm back at my sleep spot for the night. I've been eating sandwiches and cereal for days now because I was going to cook warm food, but I don't have my stove. Still have no idea where that is. So in search of food, I might be heading out because there's also a storm coming tomorrow. It's going to snow pretty bad. I need to head out regardless. It's honestly just been such a nice little retreat here and it's just been nice to live really simply and minimally. Now I have to go back and deal with the bus, all the repairs that have to be made, which I'm not looking forward to. What's worse is I have to eat cereal for dinner tonight. Honestly, I don't even think I can. I'm so grossed out. I might just have fruit because that's all I have left. And that sounds a lot better. Oh, oh my gosh. There is no better feeling than that. <laughs> Taking off your hiking boots in the day. Oh. I love my little nighttime routine here. I just go to the creek and bathe and journal. It's my favorite part of my day. 